Now, Mason, uh, Warner Brothers are only allowed to release two movies, remember, towards the back That's end correct. of the year. That's correct. So they'd better be bangers. <laughs> they'd yeah. better be unmitigated successes yes. that everybody loves. Rotten Tomato scores are 90% or above. Certified fresh. Uh, so they'd better start paying people off is true. what I'm saying. That's what they do. Yeah. User reviews obviously would have to be additionally through the roof. Oh, yeah. Uh, the first one was... The, Don't that? worry, darling. Yep, that one. Okay. I haven't seen it. Yep, also haven't seen it. But I, I did read an article that spoiled it, and I'm like, that's fine. That'll do. <laughs> the second one, of course, is Black Adam, which is, uh, as mentioned, finally here. Uh, it was cast 2008, 2009 maybe. Yeah, uh-huh. They've mm-hmm. just been sitting on it. Uh, in terms of box office. When the rock had hair. When the rock had hair. Yeah. All the early fan heart. He and had he shaved his head. Yeah. And he, he continues to shave continues his head to, to, shave this, it. to this day. But if you go back to the, like the early fan heart, he's got, uh, he's got the, the widow's peak slick back. Which you know, is the traditional kind the of Black look. Adam look, yes. Look, but now they'll change the comic, so he's got this look, obviously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for a bit, at least. DC editors are over there, over there artists being like, no, veinier, <laughs> more veins. <laughs> so uh, $195 million budget. Uh-huh. Uh, not surprised at all by that. Speaking of, yeah. just to cut you off there. Sure. Recently I learned, and this is from uh, editor Matt yeah. on Twitter, he pointed out that uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is the most expensive movie ever that made. Either. That's incredible. It cost $400 million. And? Yes, who, what's it? What is it? I don't even know which one it is. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> no, I don't I know do. what the subtitle it's, is. It's the one with Penelope Cruz and the Mermaids. Relative bargain, $195 million. I think so, for what you're getting here. Uh, 60 to $62 million, they look at looks in terms of a US opening weekend, which okay. is not terrible. It's uh, mid. Well, mid. Well, it's not, it's not mid. that bad. But no, no, James. You can say that all you like, but I can easily refute you by going, oh, mid. That's a good point. It's mid. And I did get emotional, so you, you won. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But this is via Gatish Panda, uh, a tweet that they put out, and this is then again via comicbookmovie.com. They said that even if Black Adam rises to $65 million for the opening weekend, that will be 21% bigger than the 53.5 opening uh, of Shazam in That's 2019. Sure. Mm-hmm. So factor in three years of ticket prices increases, and Black Adam is likely to reach an audience size only 10% bigger than Shazam's with a production cost 100% bigger. Oh, no. So in terms of return on investment, and obviously it, turn, it depends on word of mouth and drop-off and all mm. of these different things, it seems as if at this point – um, it's it's not a disaster by any stretch, but yes. it's not it's not like the most bang for your buck you could you could make with something like this. Luckily, we're not paying for it then. Yeah, and we look, didn't even pay for our tickets. Oh wait, you did. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think also I got a free coke and a popcorn. <laughs> 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 not to brag, and I just don't know whether this is a movie that people are recommending to each other. Either, yeah, right. Which we'll get into. But I but before that, I need to know uh, what Go you on. think the story was. Oh no! Yeah. All right. Um. Well, th- this will be easy because a, a young boy does a narration at the start of the movie and he yep. explains exactly where we are. Yep. Be like, hey, you might be wondering what's going on here. Well, I wasn't, but uh, okay, we're in the we're in the we're in the the country of Kandak. It's yep. in the Middle East. All right, and then bloody bloody, uh, there was a back in the day there was an evil guy and he was like, I'm so evil, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I know. But then the, the the Shazam guy showed up, the wizard guy, and he showed up and he's like, hey, but we make a champion out of yeah. a magic. Hello. We get a guy and we get a magic and we put them together. We get a magic guy. Yeah. He'll be the thing. But then. Didn't Shazam, wasn't it like we don't normally give this to kids? That's a great question. Yeah. I mean, I've seen movies, yeah, yeah. but I don't, sure. I don't, I've seen that. I, I liked it. That's I don't right. Know. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's like a last resort to give it to a kid. Anyway, go on. Maybe. Yeah, but kids, kids these days, you know what I mean? It's different, you isn't it? You wouldn't, give, you wouldn't give, you know, omnipotent magical powers to a kid these yeah, days. right. And The Rock would have been, like, back then. He would give have him been drugs talking. in Halloween candy is <laughs> yes. what you'd give him, you know? So, Thousands of dollars worth of drugs. You put yeah, in, the put Hall- in there. Just give it away give for some it reason. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away, give it away now. now. That's drugs. right. You'd red hot chili pepper them. <laughs> you'd red hot chili pepper those kids. <laughs> Uh, but then they, then they did. But then what happened? Where's he gone? He's been gone for 5,000 years. Where's, where's the yeah. guy? Where's the guy? Where's the guy? We're going to find out in the movie Black Adam, let me yeah, tell you that he much. he comes out, he's back. Yeah. He goes, hello, it's mm. the future now, Modern Day. That's right. Now, I think that was a pretty good summary. I agree. They probably could have used that in the movie. That's right. Let me tell you this, James. We have, well, actually, you know this. Yeah. But let me tell you this, listeners. We have not discussed the movie Black Adam at all. No. Even for a moment before this. Mm. So this will both of these react, whatever these reactions are, They'll be a surprise to us. We should have a camera on each of us yep. so we could do separate reaction videos <laughs> when we tell each other our opinions of the movie Black Adam. We can be like, a Yeah, okay, you sure. Anyway, what did you think of it? I thought it was pretty fun. 
Okay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I guess. James, my my opinions have become completely <laughs> unmoored from reality. I'll tell you that much. I thought this was – here's the thing. I went into this movie – We've we've mentioned this before. We've we you know, and if if you listen to the podcast on a regular basis, we have been yeah talking about this movie for quite a long time, and we've we've seen trailers, and we've talked about the Rock's various performances in things, sure, and how you know the the demands of of his camp in terms of what he will do on screen, and can he be defeated, and all this sort of stuff, mm, and, yeah. Uh, and I went into this. I didn't. I certainly didn't go into this hoping that I would hate it or anything like that. No. Even though I'm a big DC hater, as you know, I only love Marvel movies. Sure, it's and true, I it's hate true. Everything DC. Yeah. But I'm like, I think this is going to be pretty plainly obvious. You know, all the things we know about of the Rock production. Yeah. And I'm like, this is pretty good. I thought he like I enjoyed him because I think the Rock has always been like very charismatic. Right. Like as long as as long as he's been around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in terms of like a movie, uh-huh. this is just like the most middle of the road thing I might have ever. That's experienced. interesting. Yeah, and it, I know, like I, I, I love the idea of seeing the Justice Society and, uh-huh. and fancy helmets and Hawkman and all <laughs> of the. Oh, there were fancy yeah. helmets galore. By that, I mean two, three, if you count Adam Smasher's mask. Sure, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. No. But I just think there was so much about this was just like, why is this happening? And this person isn't very interesting. Well, let, let what kind tell, of superhero team is this? They I mean, suck. it's it, look, it's <laughs> certainly it, the movie certainly has their flaw. The movie certainly has its flaws. It it has a number of uh, plot holes that are big enough for uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, actor and famously large man, yeah. to simply comfortably stroll through. Oh, okay. But and we we can talk about those in spoilers, I think. Yeah. But I liked the Rock in this. Uh, He's good. Yeah, I he thought is. The, I thought the, thought the supporting cast were good. Like the Justice Society members, I thought were pretty fun and entertaining. Especially Aldous Hodge as as Hawkman. Yeah, I, I thought, thought he was very charismatic. I thought I, I like him. Yep. I've, got, I've got questions about his Hawk abilities. Right. Um, yes. Uh-huh. Which is which is not a plot hole. I'm just curious. That's yeah. not like I'm not being. No, they didn't exactly explain this, and I don't get it. Right. Like, I'm just I'm more curious, and I like Pierce Brosnan's Doctor Fate. The other two completely take it or leave. Right. Uh-huh. There's a guy who's. I think I think they were put together as like a cutesy kind of will they or won't they kind of because we have a we have Adam Smasher and we have uh, Cyclone yeah. who are both kind of rookie heroes. Yeah. Okay. We, we can start on that team though, but just the idea of like. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a, re- a real reverse Thor Love and Thunder, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be saying stuff, and you're going to be bewildered by it. Yeah, but again, I didn't. I certainly didn't hate it. It just kind of yeah. washed over me. Even though I liked even some of the um, the non-powered supporting cast, the civilians. I'm going to bring up their names because I cannot. If they if they yeah, don't, if they don't, family if they, and whatever. If they don't have a superhero name, uh, what does anybody know about? Exactly. Them? We we got we got Sarah Shahi as a as a um a woman who believes in the the the, the myth and the power of. Black I think this Adam. movie could have done with more of her. Actually, and yeah. one bit that I really liked is when the Justice Society come in to to save to save Quandark from yes. Black Adam, uh-huh. and she's like, "What are you doing here? We've mm. been like under we've been under rule for for like yeah. twenty seven years, and you show up when we get a superhero mm. just to batter this dude because you you don't like his lightning powers." Yeah, yeah. Mm. We got um, uh, Mohammed Amir as as Karim, who is. Sarah Shah, his brother. Yeah, I, I thought him. he was fun. He's yeah, kind of like yeah. a, he's sort of like a, like a Middle Eastern Jack Black kind of thing. Sure, yeah. And he's got a recurring, mo- like music, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, look, we'll talk, we, we can talk about the soundtrack as well, which I thought was bad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I like that his, like. It reminded me of Suicide Squad 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, kind of... like how every, like, you know, su- superheroes have their various musical motifs. Superman's got one or whatever. And this guy's musical motif is Baby Come Back by Player. Yep. Just yep. That, I thought that was very funny. Um, not the Ron Moss cover. No, not the Ron <laughs> cover. I even thought the um, the little kid was not as annoying yeah, as he fine, could be. Yeah. There's other stuff I think we'll have to talk about in spoilers. Stuff that I thought was bad. Yeah, I thought the like like you mentioned. I think the it, it took that element. This this script also must have been in development for a long time. Oh, yeah. I think I think the plot holes in this have come down to in a lot of instances, a bunch of rewrites. They're like, this didn't work, so we'll rewrite it, and we've been left with another plot. I can't imagine Dr. Fate was in the original incarnation of this movie. Not a fucking chance in hell. They saw Dr. Strange and went, yeah, we'll do that. Well, see, that's the thing. What is interesting about this movie, and I think we mentioned it earlier in news, is that I think I've seen some criticism of this movie that's just like, oh, it's so derivative of Marvel and there's, you know, well, Dr. Fate is just Dr. Strange and, Adam Smasher is just Ant Man, and uh, I think that Hawkman the, is literally just Falcon because he's got the wings and the shield. Yeah, but the, he's, he's, uh, I think they elevate, like as we yeah. were talking about earlier with Marvel, it being Pierce Brosnan and uh, Aldous Hodge. Yeah, yeah. name, yeah. Yeah, I think they they bring a lot to that. Which, I think they do, which yeah. helps. Yeah, uh-huh. but it's also a function of like 
you just have to get in first. Because so Marvel and DC, yeah, definitely, yeah. They everybody's or do it way better. Or do it way which better. Just didn't. I feel yeah, right, right. right. Uh-huh. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love seeing the big gold helmet and he's in and out of the costume and all of that. And he's got uh-huh. vague. He can see the future powers yeah, yeah. and whatever. I lo- I liked all of that. I wish they had have explored more of his abilities. Yeah. And it wasn't just multiple guys and triangles, which was yeah, also I true, know yes. your problem with the original Doctor Strange, yes. where it was just firecracker kung fu. Yeah. This was that. But well, for, absolutely, I agree with that. I think the. The strongest part of Doctor Fate was that Pierce Brosnan was doing, and I yeah. think he, I think his performance was good and interesting. And I loved his outfits. In the, yeah. One moment on the plane, he comes out and he's just in his like his, his, his not- beautiful robe. He's got a beautiful <laughs> silk robe. He's like, I've been in the drawing room or whatever. Yeah, I thought his performance was great. Yeah, like the the, the strongest part of that character was Pierce Brosnan doing that character, but the weakest part was again just you've got a character with seemingly unlimited power. Yeah, and and like I loved seeing the multiple guy thing. The first time it happened. Right. Uh-huh. But then he just keeps doing it. So, but just to get back to Black Adam, yes. there was a lot of just like people telling him he's a hero and then he's like, I'm not a hero. Yeah. But then like a minute later, he's like, I'll, I'll catch that kid or whatever. Yeah, I guess I'll be a hero. And there, there, <laughs> I felt like it was repeating itself. Like there were, mm-hmm. there was twice in this movie where he picked up two guys and took them up to the sky to drop them yes. to somebody else uh-huh. to catch them. But there's things that I liked about him. He sat in the chair. Like, sure the, did. like the comic book. Oh my Mason. god! Yep, he sat in that have chair. You, have you seen the thread on Twitter of superheroes sitting, sitting in that in the chair? chair? Yes, <laughs> no, I have seen yeah. that. Uh-huh. Uh, I like how, and this changes the movie progresses. He doesn't walk and he doesn't stand. He floats. He everywhere, floats yeah. for like. And there's a moment at the start where the kid is following him down the stairwell, and he's just like slowly dropping down, like uh-huh. having a conversation. Like he doesn't use doors. Like he's just got complete disregard for for humanity. It yeah. seems. But again, it was that thing of like. He, he was just, he's just helping people anyway. Like, you know, yeah, I, I didn't sure. feel the sense of that he was a bad dude or he was killing any more people than Batman or mm. Superman have killed. The villains in this in this movie is I don't think it's a spoiler. The 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 initial villainy of this movie is is intergang, which yeah. is norm, normally like a Superman villain. They're kind of like sort of uh, an international crime syndicate mm. and they're just sort of fairly anonymous. I thought that was pretty uh, disappointing. The only thing they were missing was they were all South African mercenaries. I feel like it yeah. was a perfect opportunity to be like, these are all South African right. guys. I think there needed to be – I would have appreciated like a second-tier villain, yeah. like not who, – who is strong enough to menace regular people but he's not a match for Black Adam, like, you know, like Blockbuster or somebody yeah, sure. like, you know, just a big brute – Yep. They they can go, okay, well, we have, you know, we have men, we have soldiers with guns and we have gra- anti-gravity bikes and we also have this guy who just rolls in and, you know, flips cars or whatever. I thought that yeah, would be... I, I'd, ag- I'd agree with that, yeah. because mm. But I think the, the draw of this, was like a lot of it was supposed to be, you're seeing like all, the, not the just the Justice League, because I feel like they couldn't do that for various reasons mm. and maybe they're saving it, was getting like superheroes to fight this guy. Yeah. But I didn't find that particularly entertaining. And I also think... There's a, there's a twist in this, which is in the trailers, where it's like at the start, it's the person who gets the Black Adam powers is is not the Rock. You gonna spoil it? I think we should take it's it. It's in the trailers. Is it? Yeah. Huh. He's like my my son was killed, and and then I became a, a bad a, a Black Adam. Like it's literally oh, okay, in the trailers. Right. Yeah. There you go. And I don't think anybody's gonna be tricked by that because you you never see like oh no absolutely his not. face, yeah. but he's just like standing around like that's there's, very there's true. a rock and they've like thinned him down. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought this was a very like straight down the line superhero thing, and I'm like I enjoyed. But what are they it. hiding though? At that point, it's like oh, I don't what's know, the twist? Yeah. What are we doing? No, that's, here? No, that doesn't work. Um, like even if you didn't see the trailers, there is no way you wouldn't have mm. seen that. Like no, coming. that's true. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I think like overall, I just found this. Be like a very straight down the line superhero. That is true. Like you know, there, there. The, I, I feel like this sort of implements most of the tropes of a superhero movie, and I just enjoyed the the execution of that. Did you like? Uh, I like the idea that the, and it's it's similar with the Suicide Squad mm. that the Justice Society just exists already. I did like that. Did, we didn't need an origin for most of the stuff there. No. I like their little mansion headquarters with the... With they, it's the, the X-Men. they got the X-Men yeah, yeah, jet. Yeah, they got the X-Jet, yeah. There's also a moment where they're like, do you know this jet's indestructible? And then at the end, it gets like batted out of the sky. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess it isn't. Yeah. Like, what a pointless... <laughs> Is it? What like, we never see it be indestructible, and then it's just knocked out of the oh, sky right. at the end. We'll see. Look, I... Look, was, was we supposed to go, wow, I thought that jet was indestructible? Yeah, look, logically, the idea behind that is is that 
it's norm- it's nominally indestructible, but the the villains are so powerful that it destroys it. But you're right; there is no proof that it is indestructible. So maybe Hawkman's just lying, and he goes to his mechanic the next day, or the guy who sold it to him is like, "Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You said this was indestructible." <laughs> then there's a moment where that you know, Pierce Brosnan's like, "The world needs the Justice Society," and I just don't believe that because first of all, it's four people, and that's not enough. But I guess Black Adam is the fifth member. I guess right, yeah, yeah, yeah. by the end, but also. The Justice League. Most of them don't know each other. That's true. Or they're just starting out. Mm. And one of them is like a really big guy who will run in and do a big punch and then someone will knock him over. Uh Like he's terrible. He's a terrible member of the team and they're a terrible unit. There's a moment when they go to Black Adam and they're like, we're going to make this guy stop. Where's he from? Ancient Egypt. Oh, he was a he was a slave, was he? Yeah, we'll go and we'll make we'll ask him to kneel. You yeah, fucking yeah. idiot. Also, you can see the future, you fucking dumbass. He can see what some you, of the future. Some of the in future. A very vague, he can, <laughs> James, he can see what the screenwriter requires of him to see of the future. Well, that's exactly right. Two, Look, I'm hungover. Maybe yeah, that's you are, you, you've been on a dad's weekend. Um, two th- here's the two sides of that coin. One, you're absolutely right. It was incredibly dumb. And I, I wonder how much influence The Rock had on this script in the sense that they just, instead of going in and saying, hey, just so you know, I, you mu- you, you're probably confused because you've been away from Earth for 5,000. You've been away, yeah. f- you, you've been in, in a magic box for 5,000 years or whatever. Yeah. How about we just have a chat about this? But they show up and they're like, we're going to kill you. <laughs> we're going to kill you or put you in prison. And he's like, well, I guess we've got to fight now. Like that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. But I mean that's, I guess they had to force their wife. What they should have done, I think, I don't think this is a spoiler, what they should have done because it, it didn't happen. I mean, because they needed it's, them to fight. Pure, I understand they needed them to fight, yeah, like yeah. They, but you're saying there's a better way well, to Well, what they should have done is they should have been like, hey, let's have, a, let's have a chat, and then somebody, maybe a blockbuster-style character or some, or, you know, intergang or whatever, they set a bomb off and both sides think the other guy sure. blew up a building and then they fight. That would That'd make sense. Quiet. What I liked about this, and we've, we've spoken about this before many a time, but famously in the Fast and Furious universe, The Rock, as Hobbs or possibly Shaw, whichever yeah. one he is, has has apparently I think it switches moving to movie. It might do. He has a clause in his contract apparently that he can't lose a fight. He can only tie or win. Yeah. Right. And the, it is, it has been suggested that maybe he requires that in all his contracts now. And they all do in the Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah. Least, so yeah. maybe in every movie going forward, he can't lose. He can only tie or win. If that is the case in this movie, I think they did a pretty good job of covering up the seams of that. Yeah, I'd agree like, with that. Yeah. In terms of, because, again, it's in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler there. There is, you know, the classic superhero conflict where they have all have to fight. Mm. Uh, I felt like, as, as a viewer, knowing all I know about The Rock and all these various characters, even though I knew what the outcome was obviously going to be, they're going to fight for a bit and then they're going to be mates, the classic formula. I felt like, given a few more rounds, it might be possible for Hawkman to beat him in a fight. You know yeah, what see, I mean? I didn't, I, what I enjoyed about that fight was that, Hawkman was never going to be. Did I say it. Hawkeye? Haw- it doesn't have. matter. Yeah, yeah. Hawkeye, Hawkeye could have been. <laughs> sure. He could have used a. You have the right arrow. He's got his own. Uh, the rock in this has his own sort of kryptonite. Yeah. The, the sort element of. Eternium, which is. <laughs> but which he can also got, zap it away. Yeah, you can only get it in Kandak, and, and, and uh, Intergang have made it into like anti gravity and they've made it into. And it happens and to be like, a thing that he, yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you were saying, sorry about Hawkman slash Hawkeye. Yeah, like I, I liked that he kept going in to fight the rock. Uh huh. And he was never going to win that fight because he's just completely outclassed. But he's dumb enough and, like, too proud <laughs> to admit that this guy will just kill. Like, he'll, if you keep going, he'll kill See, you. See, I don't know. I kind of felt – I was like – he did quite he's, well, like, I thought. know, but he's got his gear. Yeah. But, like, he's, that will get you so far. Like, he, I loved his spinning mace. This mm. is my question about him. Is he the alien one? Oh, I don't know. Where no do idea. his wings come from? Yeah. Is that, like, a backpack? Like, what are we What are we doing here? It is. And this isn't a complaint. Again, it's a SpongeBob I'm, backpack. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, what, what, is, what is his yeah, deal? I, is what, he the reincarnation one? That's a great question. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, presuming what, he's, what the actual character's name is would probably give me all of that information. It's, it is. It's uh, Kent Nelson is um, Hawkman. Uh, mm-hmm. Kent Nelson is Dr. Fate. This is the, this is the classic Hawkman guy. So okay. it's um, Carter Hall. Right, okay. I don't Does, know. Don't know which one. But also is. his his version has been an alien and also been a reincarnation. Gotcha. So, so he has got – what I liked about it is, again, they didn't go with he's just a regular man in a flight harness. They went with he is – This is alien tech or he's not quite, he's not quite, well, he's not quite black Adam strong, but he is strong enough to 
take a punch, a bunch of yeah. punches from Black Adam, and he's throwing cars. And stuff. Is it is it alien Thanagarian DNA? Is it magic? Is it the suit? Is it whatever? I don't think it matters really. I agree, I was, but I, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. And but then then again, that speaks to what you were talking about. Of I, I did like that these guys exist. That these guys have been running around, or at least three of them have been, and yes. then the, and the new guy. Who else has been in this team? Great question. Like what what is probably probably Wildcat, <laughs> professional <laughs> boxer who has no other powers, who wouldn't have lasted that long in this fight fight ultimately. And it, I felt like the Rock was also he was pretty much doing you know like your Drax or your Terminator Two. Like he's got a he's got a little kid and the kid's teaching him slang and and lessons. Yes, right, and he's right. like, oh, I'm literal and I don't understand anything. But then he slowly. <laughs> Understand sarcasm and uh-huh, yeah, and he's yeah. got his little catchphrase yeah. that he wants to. I do. think if this does well and it's doing fine, doing okay, I mean, doing seems, okay, yeah, it's not but, terrible, they, yeah. but they have no other options ultimately. DC at this point, yeah. I suspect potentially maybe the Justice Society will supplant the Justice League. I don't know. I think it depends what they're doing with, and we'll get into spoilers mm. and everything else that's also happening. Yeah. And we've got Batman, Ben Affleck's returning, maybe, and there's yeah. Aquaman movies. And yeah, but he could be in the Justice Society. And... He's been in the Justice Society. You're right. Before. Yeah, you're absolutely so, right. Yeah. I mean, and also maybe they're going to do Justice Society versus Justice League. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa. You seem thrilled for that. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Um, Can you tell? I mean, this could. be... I reckon there's somebody in Warner Brothers and in DC going, okay, remember how the Avengers was a bunch of second stringers back, way back in the day, a trillion years ago, yeah. and they made it work. What if we look at the Justice Society roster yep. and we go, what if we get old Green Lantern what and old we, Flash sure. and others? Here's the question for you. What, oh, we yeah. get Mr. what if we get Mr. Terrific? What if we did get Mr. Terrific? Right? Sure. that's that, I like all those what ideas. Font, what font is the fair play on his leather jacket going to be I in? I think, you know, 10 Wing years. Wingdings? Which... Impact? <laughs> Ten- comic Sand, Comic Sand, <laughs> as a reference to comic books. That's great. Thank but you. Ten years ago, I think the idea of seeing all these characters together on screen would have been wild. Oh yeah, what a what a bunch of odd bods to bring together. Yes. But now it's like we've seen so much weird stuff since then that it's just it's not enough for me to be like that Doctor Fate costume looks incredible, mm-hmm. and it does. Yeah, it does. It, yeah. And that helmet, love the design, love all of that. But I. I I'd like to issue a challenge to the Rock Mason, if you don't mind. Uh oh. How about, ups And look, I, again, I think he's good in pretty much everything he's in. Every, even yeah, the things yeah. I, I really don't like the movies. Uh-huh. I like him in it. But when is he going to make an actual great movie? When is he going to make a movie that's not just fine? Great question. I, I a think, rundown sequel is what you're saying. Well, I think his best is probably the rundown. The Jumanji movies are pretty good. The, hmm. the Fast and Furious ones he's in, are, you know, I know there are some good moments and yeah, good yeah, ones yeah. in there. But if he's, if we're comparing him to like Arnold or Stallone or any of the exact action mm-hmm. heroes, even Bruce Willis or whatever, yeah, where's his Terminator? Where's his, his Rocky? Question. Where's his John McClane? Like this is just this. Yeah. And like the last one was... Fucking Jungle Cruise, which again was fine, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. And he's like, again, he's good in it, but it's just, I don't know whether this. You know, there's a small chance that he will reply to this, because sometimes he does. Sure. Look, again, don't beat me up, and we'll, we'll do push ups together. But I want, I know. If you can do more push ups than The Rock, <laughs> he will search out his, his Terminator. How about too. he does push ups with me on his back and then vice versa? That's perfect. <laughs> you know what? The, the problem I think, though, is that. I think it's his team. I think it's this sanitized image that's going I on. I think it's the team, but it's also. He can do it, though, is what I'm saying. He's got the ability no, no, to I'm do it. No, but I'm saying also that it is the team, but it's also there's an absolute like dearth of directors who are allowed to do a new thing. Yeah. Like every like all the you know most of the people they get to do Marvel stuff and DC stuff or whatever just comes in and does what they're told. Like James Cameron didn't come in and do what he was told for, that, for Terminator. That's, you're exactly so you right. Need, yep. You need you need the Rock, unlimited charisma and unlimited biceps. Yep. And you need someone to have enough creative freedom to say I want to do this and I think it would work well for the Rock and his team to agree on it. Yeah. And a studio to go okay, I guess. Imagine if like the Rock did his true lies. Yeah. You know, like Arnold on his own, mm-hmm. The Rock is a whole is a whole industry unto himself. Like he's making. Creative- Whenever we say The Rock, also folks, we do a big, <laughs> we do a, we do a big glow, like a big, yeah. like the we we try to imagine with our arms the biggest thing you can possibly imagine. But like he's he's an ecosphere of like, yeah, do you know what I mean? And he's making these properties and he's making these big decisions. Yeah. But I think you just you need someone to come in a James Cameron or Scorsese, I don't know, somebody, and just yeah. be like, I have this. Like fantastic idea, and this role will suit you. And you do the thing that you do, yeah, yeah. But put it in a narrative mm. that's that's not just fine. See, I, and the, the thing is, as well, I think that now that you do mention that, that he's been in stuff that is akin to that sort of thing, but none of it 
But it, again, it's it's all studio interference and what have you. Like he did that movie Central Intelligence. Yeah. Which I'm... Pro- Red Notice. Probably this has, is the shit yeah, that we're, we're they doing. Pro- probably has elements t- akin to True Lies and they probably go, they probably look on the whiteboard and go, okay, this is going to be True Lies. Yeah. But we can't do that and that and that. So yeah. we, we, this is what's left. What are the Maybe mo- what if he did a Safdie Brothers movie or sure. something? Sure. Yeah. But like, what are the movies that people are going back for for him? You know, mm. what are the ones that people remember other than him as, oh, let's a, look it up real quick, as a person? Yeah, and maybe Pain and Gain, maybe. Okay, sure. Mm, great. These are James. These are all great. Great. Qu- We're asking the big questions. Yeah. And I think it's a credit to the movie Black Adam <laughs> that it's brought us to the point that we're asking these questions, which I think means to me that it is in fact a good movie. And again, I thought it was okay. Yeah, right, right. It's, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it is. It is. Should isn't it? we should we go into spoilers? I think now? we should. Yeah, I'm going to say best movie ever. I had a good time. Uh, I was not. Uh, again, we're going to talk about plot holes in this. I to me, I don't even. That doesn't even. None of that shit bothers to me, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, to me, this felt akin to Spider Man No Way Home. I don't know if that is blasphemous to say or whatever, <laughs> but I'm like, there were a bunch of. Do people hate movie. that at the moment? I don't know. I don't know. There's, there was a backlash and then there was a backlash to the backlash and then there was that phase where everybody was just posting single frames of the movie and going, this sucks, whatever. And I think that's already started to happen with Black Adam. You've seen the famous sort of nose diving the rock <laughs> yeah. single frame. Where he looks like he's got a GoPro on a yeah, stick yeah, yeah. to his head. Yeah. Right. I love that. Yeah, but at I, least it looked different, yeah, you know? To me, these felt similar in that I liked the charismatic leads. I liked all the supporting cast. I think there was some, there was some good fun action in it for me anyway yeah uh it didn't break any it, it like it, there were no twists that blew my mind or yeah. anything like that but i thought okay everybody's good in this on a good time he was marketing the movie based on the uh the and one huge reveal you gotta say it's best movie ever at least now because it's over <laughs> yeah i guess it's been it literally a more than yeah. a decade look i didn't i didn't hate it like yeah. uh, so i guess it's best but this is the this is so middle of the road <laughs> right, if yeah. we had that ranking yeah, yeah. it would have been right in the middle that's right yeah uh, all right. Spoilers, Spoilers then. All right. Uh, Amanda Waller's in this. Yep. Uh, Jennifer Holland turns up in a Trinity cosplay. She's That's from right. a better series. She's skipping yeah, yeah, yeah. over. So is She's Amanda like, Waller. I'm in this. I'm in this Arctic. I'm in this Arctic facility, and it's all very cold. I better wear this vinyl trench coat. It's very confusing uh, nice. outfit. Yeah, <laughs> extremely. Just didn't feel like it matched her character in Peacemaker at all. And I'm like, what's she even doing there? I what? don't know. Is this? I thought she was living in hotels is, and is it tracking they, down weirdos. Is it because they screwed up the mission in Peacemaker? I kind don't of, know. And, then, and she's been. Or, or is it? Or is it a promotion? Maybe it's a promotion. I can't yeah. tell. Mm. Anyway, I love Peacemaker, and I thought that was yeah. Str- you know Amanda Waller and whatever. I loved seeing Henry Winkler. As a rit- I forgot about that. As, <laughs> as, a- as, as Black Adam's uncle. No, as Adam Smasher's Adam, uncle. Sorry, Adam Smasher's uncle. Original but he's Adam a, Smasher. But this, this new guy's inherited his powers from Seems his uncle? that way. All right, fine. Henry Winkler was filling out that suit, was he? Come on, let's be realistic. <laughs> that dude is enormous. He's a fridge. Not oh, Henry Winkler. The, the new guy, yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. they got it tailored. Yeah, maybe they did, yeah. He's doing, they put some extra gussets in it. They us. must have, yeah. Mm. Um, I thought the villain of just being a demon man was fine. I like the design. I think when you see it sort of... No, I just it, not even that. Just like it, it was so late in the day. Yeah, but I did like how the Rock tore him in half. I'm that was like, fun. That was good. Well, I mean, it, it, we, we did. I did some non-spoiler criticism of this earlier, but spoiler criticism. Obviously, how is this guy related to? Hang on, let me let me just bring up the cast list. Okay, so we've got Sarah Shahi as Adriana Tomas. She's the professor who who believes in the power of of Black Adam, etc. Sure, and she was good. then. And at least they didn't kiss. Yeah, that's true. I feel like in a worse oh, movie, yeah, they would have sure. yeah, kissed. Yeah, yeah. So the guy who plays her her um, compatriot, her um, assist, like the, the the guy who turns out to be the bad guy, the guy who turns out to be the yeah. bad guy. Yeah, he. I, I don't know. That's why we needed another. We needed who was another he villain. even? I know they kind of explained. I thought it, but initially like, they're related, but they're not related. But like he wasn't. In not char- everybody from Kandak is related. No, but he wasn't in charge of. The team he was using the team to get to the crown. Let, and we, and what, who, whose backpack was that crown in? Man, that crown was doing some moving and shaking. Let's get to plot. Let's get to plot holes, James. And you've, you've you've hit the nail on the head here. So the thing about this is that uh, Sarah Shahi's character she believed both that there was a champion in the past five thousand years ago, and also that there was an artifact, this crown of Sabak, yep. that, that had incredible powers and would only be used for evil. And it's how Han Solo won the Millennium Falcon. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Go on. And what she wanted to do was find it so she could hide it somewhere else. Yeah, because they so, were getting close. So uh, so, uh, so, an artifact that nobody's found for 5,000 years. The tomb was open. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. the roof was open. Yeah. So she wanted to do, I, I assume she wanted to do a, a bit of, um, 
Justice League, like dig it up and then stick it in a hole that's six feet deep and put some dirt on it. Yeah. But this it was it felt very reminiscent of one of the Indiana Jones movies where if Indiana Jones didn't intervene, nothing bad would happen. <laughs> like if she didn't yeah. intervene, they probably never would have found it because they didn't know where to look. Yeah, you might be right, yeah. But I think what happened there is I think it, I, I, if I had to guess, I would say the original script was she had all the skills to find the thing, but she didn't want to find the thing. Mm. And the other guy really wanted to find the thing, but he didn't know how to get the thing. So she, so he manipulated her into get, get finding the thing. The thing. Sure. Okay. But if you did that, then she's like a person with no agency who's just wandering around like, oh, whatever. So they went, <laughs> let's make her more of a like a Lara Croft Tomb Raider yep, kind of she character. She does a big jump. She does a big jump. But but then that leads her in the position where she wants to find a thing that shouldn't be found. Mm. But they're like, yeah, it's fine. It's close <laughs> enough, whatever. <laughs> also, so the, the dudes, in order to become the devil, yeah. what you have to do is you have to find the crown and be in possession of the crown and then something like de- life leads to death and death leads to life. So you have to get the crown. Because it's upside down in And a you mirror. have to die. Yeah. But you can't just shoot yourself. No, you need he someone have done, to do He would have shot it. He would have shot himself. You might himself. even specifically need a black Adam to Well, see, that's the that thing right? because if you could just get anybody else to kill you, you could just get one of your mates to yeah. shoot you. So I guess you have to be killed in a magical way. Yeah, because right, I guess the crown, like black Adam, who was the first Shazam guy, yeah. he was built in direct – Retaliation to the crown. To the crown so I'm right. guessing that they're linked. The in Netflix that way. series of the, the crown. crown. That's right. Yeah. But so I guess you have to get someone magical to kill you. But he had no way of knowing that she would release Black Adam in the first place. Yeah. And he seemed incapable of doing that. Mm. So and he's and confused. Yeah. And, and and it was weird that he was all like they they go to this location with the um where the crown is and then there's just a lot of running around and yep. screaming or whatever and you'd think. They'd be, they'd, there'd be a moment where he'd be like, okay, everybody stop. Mm. Just to be clear, I'm the bad guy. And if you could release Black Adam and then I'll do yeah, the thing with the, the crown or whatever. whatever. Yeah. But it was just. And i I got to say, though, I enjoyed just watching Black Adam just like slaughter a bunch of people. That was I fun, thought yeah. there were some really creative moments. There's a slow-mo moment, which is pretty good where you see him like, it's kind of like a Quicksilver moment, but uh-huh. you know, but I think it's a little bit more creative than saying it's just like derivative of that. Mm. He's just fucking blasting people with lightning and yeah. whatever. I think I think. That's all pretty pretty good stuff, you know. Mm. But it, it doesn't, to me though, show that he's particularly bad guy. He's just a guy who. No, I mean, if that, uh, if look honestly, if that's that's the biggest misstep, I think is the, is a the big guy kept falling over in the city. He's probably killing 40, 40 people <laughs> at a pop. At that. Yeah, yeah, heroes don't kill people except by accident. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And we have insurance for that, so it's fine. <laughs> we have good lawyers. We get him off criminal negligence every yeah, yeah. week. Um, yeah, I think if that if. One of the – I wouldn't say the biggest misstep, but one of the missteps this movie makes is this tired old trope of heroes don't kill, which clearly was written pre – I feel the entire concept of that was written pre-Avengers probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Pre-Iron Man yeah. where it's like, do you see how many dudes Iron Man killed in that first movie? So, so many. So many dudes. Yeah. You know? He's still killing dudes. He's dead. He's killing dudes. He's still <laughs> right. out there. Yeah, yeah. It's so many unexploded shells all over the Middle <laughs> East. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess there was also a moment where Pierce Brosnan, he sacrificed himself. He puts up a big triangle net and so he mm. can fight um, the bad guy and he, yeah, and he dies. True. But I'm not – I didn't really – I didn't feel anything then. I'm like, he's probably just fishing him out of that helmet. He's probably in there. If you stick your arm and I reckon you pull him out like a rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or get another guy because a bunch of people have worn the Dr. Exactly, Fate helmet, yeah. right? Uh-huh. But I did enjoy that the Hawkman, he'd, he picked up that Dr. Fate helmet trick. Yeah. I would have enjoyed it more if they hadn't have done it like eight times leading up. Yeah, Maybe right, do right. it at the start and then uh-huh. he does it at the end yeah, yeah. and it's a callback and whatever. Mm, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's Pierce Brosnan's go-to thing is, is be eight guys and hold you. Sure, yeah. There should have. I mean, it, it would have been nice if there was any foreshadowing of like maybe there is. Maybe I missed the line of Doctor Fate being like, "I keep trying to teach you this magic, and you don't, you don't learn the magic." Or I keep trying to get you to put this helmet over the top of the helmet you're already wearing. That's right. Oh, you know what? I was going to mention that. Why is um, he leaving his helmet on the table, by the way, Max- so people can walk up and touch it? And the wind woman is like, you. "Don't do that because yeah, yeah. he'll kill you." Whatever. Put a post-it note on it. Yeah. What are you doing? You. Oh, like he's on the team. You tell him all that information, yeah, and you yeah. hold on to your helmet. Mm. Fuck, at least the jet's invincible because <laughs> right. who knows what would have happened if he touched that helmet. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah put a post-it note on the helmet. Um, <laughs> don't. Just says don't. Just don't. <laughs> or maybe that's the test. Maybe that's your final test for being a Justice Society member. Yeah. It's like don't touch a man's helmet. It's important. <laughs> um, I was going to say maximum credit to Aldous Hodge and anybody else who has worn a Hawkman mask in live action because they look so stupid. 
I think it does a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, like, yeah. he's pull- and he's also he's, he's very attractive, so that helps. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you the, can't put that on anyone. It is one of the most ridiculous looking helmets, especially in close up. Especially when it doesn't have like covered eyes; it's just got eye holes, and your regular eyes are poking yeah, out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, no white eyes going on there, or glowing mm-hmm. eyes. Yeah. I thought it was, uh, you know, how the guy goes to hell, and I didn't mind that visual motif of he's in hell and yeah. he's upside down and whatever. It uh-huh. also felt a bit spawn when the devil yes. was like, "Spawn, run my army for me. Mm-hmm. I'm busy. Yeah. You can do this." But I, but the idea of him going back and then he was going to sit in the chair so the the dead could rise or whatever. Mm. So like twenty nine zombies could show up. <laughs> it just didn't feel like it was a world altering threat, you know. Mm. Like was that happening everywhere? It didn't seem to be happening on more than one street. We didn't even see zombies swarming the Sydney Opera House. Or yes, exactly. Like that. Where, but do you know what I mean? Like there's there was like in the in the town. Mate, we're rooted. <laughs> there's bloody zombies everywhere. <laughs> but you know, in the town, like yeah. there's. There's a you know there's twelve zombies and then yeah, a street yeah. over there's just a bunch of people standing around being like we don't know what's happening mm, at yeah, all yeah. here it's been a busy well, maybe day maybe it would have spread I don't know yeah maybe yeah. Uh-huh. and then they're not exactly indestructible no they were very you could be a guy who was earlier shot yeah. just just swinging a pipe mm-hmm. hitting these fucking zombies and whatever that's true yeah and I I really didn't like the ending of because they call him uh, Teth. Adam. Yes. Oh, Teeth Adam, I think they call him. They call him to- Toothy Adam, they <laughs> toothy call him, Adam. on account of his winning smile. Yeah, but at the end, he's like, you need a new name. And he does that does that thing where it like Yeah, yeah, the fantastic, the fan force fan- ending. Fan force yeah. also happens, at, you know, when they don't say mm. Avengers Assemble, and he's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. little smile, and then it mm. cuts to, it says. Gary Adam. Gary Adam. <laughs> teeth Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah you Sark know. has an Adam. Oh, that's good, mate. Pretty good, right? Well, yeah. it should be something reference that he's learned over the course of the. Yeah, yeah. He, did um, his, he did his he did his catchphrase as well. Didn't that's he? right. Yeah, yeah. He, he nailed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got his comedic timing. action figure opportunity. Adam, <laughs> <laughs> great stuff. Uh, should we talk about the post credits before? We should talk about thing? that. The, the one other thought that I just had there was the um. It did. I I thought there would be like no uh, association with Shazam the movie at all. Really, I mean, we got John yeah, on Hunts yeah, the is wizard, back yeah, obviously. Back. But I the thing that struck me as most Shazammy was that. The superheroes in this universe are like incredibly marketable, and they've been very heavily merchandised. Yeah. Like the the, the kid, and the, the kid has all his cyborg comics and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and and you know there was a bunch of action figures in in Shazam. I thought that was just, I thought I thought it was that was just an interesting. Weird, there was never a moment where they're like, "Hey, can you stop knocking all the walls out of my house, please?" Right? He took out every fucking wall in that he house. Sure did, I don't yeah. know how the hell it's still standing. It's, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what to do with it. Eternium. Sorry? On oh, the house is made of anth metal also. Oh, it's is indestructible. It? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. It's, re- it's really, it's really good. Anyway. <laughs> the real estate agent the next day. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You said this was made of anth metal. You said it was indestructible. <laughs> anyway, so we know that now at this point there's four members left of the Justice Society, but mm. maybe Black Adam's not a member. So there's three members left of the Justice Society. That's right. And they don't have a jet. Mm. But uh, but maybe that maybe there's a new superhero in town, mate, or an old superhero. Oh yeah, go on. Back in the in the post credits. Oh yeah. Uh, now Hiram Garcia, who was one of the producers on this, he was frustrated by the leaks, uh, the idea that Henry Cavill, like it was revealed that he was going to be back. But The Rock has just been telling people this yes. for weeks that well, he's in this. Movie. I think we mentioned maybe it was last week. You said something like, "Oh, there's a there's a spoiler floating around on the internet," and I said I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. But I had. I just was like. <laughs> Oh, it's part the, of the movie. It was from The Rock. I'm like, oh, okay, right. I didn't, I didn't. It didn't occur to me that that was. I was like, oh, some some dastardly person seen an early screening and they've spoiled it. Yeah, The Rock did apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think also for him it makes sense that he wants to be on the side of fans and he wants to bring yes. back that element of the Snyderverse that trended again. We were talking about that before mm-hmm. the show, um, as it always does. He's gone. He's not. He's not going to be back. Not for a while, at the very least. He's doing Star Wars, Netflix, or mm. whatever. But um, uh, Zack Snyder, that is. But. But, yeah, I think he was just, you know, that was his way of kind of getting fans on board. And I think there mm. are people that wouldn't have seen this if if he wasn't in it. I saw this movie with, it was ostensibly a media event, yeah. but it was all like an influencer crowd. It was like a, bu- a bunch of very. How many seasons of Big Brother did you recognize? Like 16 seasons of Big Brother. Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was Gretel Colleen there? Yeah, Gretel Colleen was there. Whoa. Um, and uh, Merlin was there. Merlin was Merlin there? Merlin was there, yeah. From season four or five, potentially. Probably, sure. <laughs> um, Sarah Marie. Sarah, Sarah Marie was Sarah there from Marie season was one Big yeah, Brother. Yeah, yeah, doing the bum dance. <laughs> she was there. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Blair there? Yeah, Blair was there. <laughs> was he? He just come off Neighbours. <laughs> Neighbours was cancelled. I Mason. know, but he's just been at home, <laughs> depressed. But he's come back for okay, this. Okay, great. Yeah, every every person from every season of Australian Big Brother was there doing the thing that they got cancelled for. <laughs> just all of them. There. Not the turkey slap incident. Yes. Oh no, Mason. Yes. 
Horrifying. Terrible news. But all I'm saying is, look, I don't want to, I don't want to judge, but it didn't feel like the the crowd was a bunch of very attractive people <laughs> who I don't think are like ordinarily there opening night of a comic book superhero movie. Sure. And there was a cheer when when Superman reappeared. In okay, the, well, that, in the, that says in the, something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the a, a general audience is likes Henry Cavill. They like seeing Superman. Yep. Completely you know? agree. So that, that if anything is going to work, that's going to work. What does it mean for him coming back, I guess? And we can talk about that. But even if there's things in the works, who knows if that's actually right. going to happen? It mm. seems as if, and The Rock has been talking about this, that he was the, he is the one behind this. And yes. he was pushing it for years, and the old guard at Warner Brothers kept saying no, and then they all got pushed out or fired mm. or left or they died. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. And now this new team are like, I, we think you're in charge of The Rock. So I, I, well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. are you the boss? Are you yeah. Kevin Feige and... It's, it says here all of you are part of some sort of tontine and the last person alive gets to decide what happens here. So I guess you're the boss of WB now, The Rock. So, so this actually, this was a recent addition in pickups. And by recent, I mean it was shot in mid-September yeah. after negotiations. Apparently it's the only thing that he's currently locked in for. Like it was a one-off appearance. Right. But there, there's been rumors that he's... How much do you think he got for it? Probably a mil. Yeah, right. I reckon. No, oh, mate, well, for that... Well, apparently, we'll talk well about did it. he do it for nothing? Well, well my, yeah. He feels like a, he feels oh, like he a guy. He wouldn't do it for nothing. Yeah, but I feel like. His, his agents wouldn't let him do it for yeah, nothing. Yeah, maybe. I feel, he feels like the kind of guy who would probably just be like, I guess I've got an afternoon. Yeah, I mean, I'm in this suit. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> in this suit playing Warhammer, <laughs> but I guess I'll, I'll do it. So what happens, uh, this was via Behind the Screen podcast where cinematographer Lawrence Sher went on and said, originally they, they shot it uh, the same way they did with Shazam, Headless Superman, mm. right? And it tested really well. Right. So they went... Maybe we'll get an actual Superman in sure, to yeah. do it. So that's then they went to Henry Cavill. And again, uh, it was a one-off deal, but they were, the studio was interested in making, and there were rumors this week of that Man of Steel 2 was a go and it's locked in, mm. but apparently it's not. No. Because the next movie also might be Superman versus Black Adam, it seems. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> they had a big long list. They're like, okay, Cavill's at the top. Yep. We can't get him. Tom Welling. Wait, no, no. But it would be Brandon Routh. Top, yeah, oh, of course. It would be Brandon Routh, top, uh, Tom Welling. Yep. The kid George from, or Christopher Reeve. Yeah, the guy from uh, the guy who was Superboy in the series. Yeah, yeah, One yeah, of yeah. the two people who was Superboy. Yeah, uh, the the D, the Justice League Unlimited Superman voice actor. We'll see if he looks anything yep. like Superman. Uh, the any of the babies from the from the movies, baby Superman. <laughs> see yes, what have they grown up to look like? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Dean Cain. Dean <laughs> My goodness. Mm. Uh, so yeah, well, how did, what 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 what'd you think? I mean, it's good to see him. He's great. Yeah, I I, I, I want exclusively more Superman stuff. We next, discussed but, this earlier, though. Yeah. Uh, off podcast, I don't know if it, I don't know if a Superman versus Black Adam movie is is yeah. going to be. What I would like is the thing that we've never really got in a DC movie, a thing that we should have gotten in Batman v Superman, which is they meet briefly at the start, they have a little bit of a fight, so we can get that out of our systems, yeah. and then they team up to beat up a bad guy. Well, that's what I would imagine the movie would be. What if it's not though? What if it's what if they've gone for some reason? We think Batman v Superman is the model, and it's just going to be a long drawn out slog until we get to them fighting and it's not that interesting because ultimately it wouldn't be that interesting i, I don't see it being that interesting I, i'd imagine there's a moment where black adam is shooting lightning and superman shooting lasers mm. and there's that the bubble is building in the middle and explodes and they both fly backwards into yeah trucks. and there'll be a moment almost certainly based on what the rock has said about this there will absolutely be a moment initially where superman's like well you can't hurt me because i'm the strongest man who ever lived in the universe and then <laughs> Uh, Black Adam punches him and he goes, well, i am got magic. Yeah. And you are vulnerable to magic like, as we know. He's in rubble and yeah. you can see the blue electricity kind of sparking mm, over yeah, him. Yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. like, what, the Swiss? I've never been punched like that before in my life. Except by Batman. And I've been... And Doomsday and I've been hit me. by I've been hit by a frying pan by my mum when I was a kid <laughs> because... Uh, I was <laughs> rude. I was a rude kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I kind of don't... I'm not really interested in Superman versus anybody at the moment. I mean, as in another yeah. hero. Yeah. I'm interested in, can you make a very good Superman movie, please? Can we make a very good, or honestly, a very good Black Adam movie? Sure. I, if if the if what is happening here is, if that if that was like a symbolic passing of the torch or something, where, where maybe in the next movie, Superman's like, I've got to go do Superman stuff, but I hope you have adventures in the yeah. future or whatever. That's fine with me as long as, what I would like to see is fewer heroes fighting heroes, even though that is a fun trope in comic books. Yeah. But the thing about comic books is, there's a hundred every month. Yep. And if you want to do that, and then the next issue they do something else. But in this, it's like, okay, we get one of these a year apparently now. <laughs> we get a this and a don't worry, darling. Yeah, sure. I don't want to see just them fighting 
I, give me compelling villains. That's interesting to yeah. me. You know? And I think putting two characters together, I think the dynamic of it is more interesting than the punching. Yeah. I think what they should have done, and they didn't because they wanted to make a Black Adam movie, was to make a Shazam Black Adam movie, and that should have been the first movie mm. because that type, they're both they're linked. They've yeah. always been linked. Those two mm. characters, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. They've got that lightning bolt. They've got the lightning bolt. Mm. They've got the same powers. They're from the same wizard. Yeah. But they wanted to do the solo thing. But I think now it would be a better idea, but probably not financially. Can we do, do that? And I think the idea of Billy Batson being a child with the powers of a god versus a psychopath <laughs> with the powers of a god, or psychopath, <laughs> would be more Who's interesting. killed so many men. <laughs> yeah, it would be more interesting. Yeah, right, right, right. But, um, but I don't think they want to do that. I think they want to keep Shazam in its own kind of thing and hit yeah. to Black Adam. Uh-huh. Because it seems like that's what the next movie is going to be also. Yeah. Which I am looking forward to because it's got Lucy Liu and I like the director and all of yeah, that. Yeah. And I enjoyed the first Shazam a lot. But I don't know why they... What I we... think they're totally too different to fight. I think it may be But I think that's that why it's that's yeah, good right. though. Also, there's little kids running around in this being like, what's your catchphrase? And it's like, oh, okay, true, then yeah. you can do it. It's that fine. That's true, yeah. You know? Mm. It's not like this is like... This is the darkest fucking thing we've ever seen. That's <laughs> true, it? yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people telling you that they've done bad deeds. But then, you know, the bad deed that... The Rock did in this is he went into a temple and blew up a fucking the king or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then he got put in a box. James, do you have no respect for the monarchy? Honestly. <laughs> We've been through this, Mason. I have nothing but respect. That's right. For our king. King uh, Brothers a Pedophile. <laughs> no. <laughs> is that not his name? Uh, no, that is his name. That is okay. his, yeah, 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 yeah. That's more of a title, I think. Oh, is it? Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know, man. Yeah. They're making movies. I'm you know? excited for a new I'm excited for this new first chapter in the DCEU. Is that what you think this is though? I mean it is, but do you think this is going to be the cornerstone of everything else that comes from comes here on out? I think they're like, going to try. Is, this yeah, I, that I agree with, but yeah. is this a solid enough foundation? Like this isn't your first Iron Man. This isn't like your Man of Steel. Uh-huh. This isn't even the first GI Joe movie. This is a that's, actually, that's This is a not. fairly <laughs> solid Avengers Age of Ultron, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay, yep. In that uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think maybe it's the best we can do at this point. I think DC needs yeah. to – I think they were onto something with – We've been saying this for years. They don't know. No, I know they, they don't. Listen don't. To us. But I think what they – I think the idea of doing, you know, your Jokers and your uh-huh. the Batman yep. and you, I guess you could have a few mainline films going on, but this uh-huh. idea of like everything's pretty much – you're just telling stories that don't necessarily have to be connected. Mm-hmm. Like the Batman's not connected to anything else and – Yeah, true. I think that – that was working for a time, you know, mm. and I, I think this idea of being like, we're just going to marvelify everything again. You, you tried that, remember? And then you fucking, and then you, you got, you panicked and you took it away. You, yeah. you made terrible Justice League and everything fell apart and everybody turned on you. In retrospect, shouldn't have called it terrible Justice League. <laughs> yeah. But then we get to this point where we've got this like bastardized version. We're terrible. That's their catchphrase. <laughs> At the end, they're all standing on a rooftop and the lightning's coming down. They're all giving the thumbs up and saying, we're Remember, terrible. guys, we're terrible. But now we've got this kind of bastardized version of things that have come before mixed mm. with like some Marvel stuff yeah. and whatever, and they're using one of the biggest, you know, movie stars in the world to be the cornerstone of, of everything. And I'm just not sure that any of this is going to pay off in any meaningful Spoiler or financial alert, capacity. It's not going to. <laughs> but I want to see him try. I'm, Absolutely. I'm kind of excited to see him try now. I mean, we're still getting second Joker. They're probably going to do another Batman. If you could bang out another Superman movie, that would be absolutely terrific. Mm. You know, there's things there's things happening that that are still good, but this is like you know, again, it's it's fine. I All guess. right then, yeah. 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 Anyway, would you say you had fun with it? No, not even. Wow, <laughs> and you had fun with Justice League 2017. Yeah, but I I was very tired then. I had, are you <laughs> not tired play. now? No, I'm more tired. But I I watched this when I wasn't tired. Okay, terrific. And it certainly didn't. Um, yeah, I didn't feel better about it days on, days after. Yeah, you know? right, right. Yeah. There you go. Got some reviews here, though, Mason. All right. Uh, these people are tweeting in, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. This is from Broderick Henry. He said, I love when comic book shows slash movies just lean in uh, and to allow the comicness of everything, and Black Adam did that for me. I had hopes of it being just okay, but it was better than I thought. Maybe the power balance has shifted. Ooh. Best movie ever. C Ray says, uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, just finished Black Adam. The Rock's Drax impersonation was spot on. Adam Smasher as Ant-Man was great. The Last Airbender, Double O, Strange Fate, and Captain Falcon were all fun. Some wonky boss battle CGI and silly writing, but decent overall. Best movie ever. Mm. Nate Scarris says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Black Adam shows that DC learned nothing from why people disliked Suicide <laughs> Squad 2016. Tonally all over the place. Full of uh, obvious editing room attempts to inject humour and visual flair into a dull, boring movie. And Johan says, 
the hierarchy of critical reception in the DC universe is about to be unchanged. Uh-oh. Also, I know I said that I had fun with Justice League. It's not a good movie, just to clarify. Sure, this sure, is sure. This is better than Justice League. It is better than Justice League. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, we did mention it, but yeah, the the soundtrack was was not. Oh my god! Also, uh, really, the world ba- is a vampire. really, really. Oh, that was that was awful, <laughs> and all, uh, and also incredibly bad timing having Kanye West on the soundtrack. Oh yeah, that, that he is having an awful meltdown currently. Yeah. I also didn't initially. I felt like when the when the movie started with the narrative from the kid, I'm like, oh, this is not a great start. Yeah, but then it sort of. I didn't mind that opening. It makes more sense. It, right, yeah. it makes more sense when you you it's revealed at the end. Or sort of in the midpoint where where the thing, you, the thing you already know yeah the, yeah the thing in the trailer yeah, where yeah. he's holding his son and screaming and being yes. like I'm not a hero mm. yeah mm-hmm. great should we move on yes with our lives no you want to you want to stay in this moment do you <laughs> I want to stew in this mire forever <laughs> all right do you know what it's time for though it's time for what we're reading yep what we gonna read perfect you've nailed that Mason a plus nice thanks. Cool. 